Hi everyone, it's Jason here, Local Tech Experts. Um, today I was going to build into this Lian Lee case for you guys, um, but I was going to go test bench and I thought, I haven't done a video where I show you what I do for my test benching, which is sort of a very important part. It's, uh, it's sort of building the machine before it actually goes in the case. Um, testing parts and things like that. So I'm going to go through my, um, my testing procedure, test benching procedure. Before I, before I put it in there, um, you've got to excuse my voice, I've got a cold today, so a um, bit of extra equipment is my lemon and honey drink here. Um, let's get uh, stuck into it and I'll, I'll show you what I do here. Alright, thanks guys. Alright guys, so the first thing I do is put it on my uh, test bench here, which I think I mentioned before is a little... Um, little uh, dinner table, like couch dinner table I got from uh, Target or something like that. Um, you can see this system's kind of dusty. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is undo all the, um, undo the uh, cooler, see what's going on under there, take it outside, give it a, um, give it a clean. Um, I was going to say the, the process, this process is the same regardless of if the parts are new, old, come out of a working system, um, the process is always the same. I, I always uh, do the same thing regardless of parts, if the parts are even new. So it's always good to um, sort of build the system from the ground up, is what I like to do anyway. And sort of the process for a repair is almost the same, um, except it remains in the case, really. Um, so. We'll try not to get too much of the dust. Oh yeah, and that CPU is dry as a bone as well. All right, so I'll uh, take take this stuff outside, give it a clean, and um, reapply the paste and come back. Another thing I like to do at this point is take the battery out um, and test that with a multimeter. Um, generally, I, I'll I'll just put a new one in. Um, these are rated, I think they're 3.2 volts. If it's anything under sort of 3 volts, I'll just chuck them away. Because you can save yourself a lot of time replacing the, replacing the battery, I can tell you. The amount of times that um, weird issues with memory or uh, weird BIOS issues, it comes down to this little thing. So three bucks worth is going to save you, save you a lot of time. Big headache. Alright, I'll um, clean it up and get on to the next bit. All right, so I took it outside, gave it a clean. Uh, that's not perfect, but definitely a lot better than it was. I um, also took this outside, gave it a clean. Same thing, it's not exactly perfect, but much better than it was. And that poor, poor CPU must have been, uh, must have been cooking without, without, it was so dry under there. So we'll just reapply some thermal paste. Occasionally I will actually, um, Oof, I think I'm running out of this stuff. This isn't the best thermal paste either, but it is cheap and it is you know, big. So I kept running out of thermal paste and it's the worst thing is not being on a completer build because you don't have thermal paste. Occasionally I'll, um, I'll reseat the CPU, but this one seems seems pretty, pretty well in there. Um, so yeah. There's my screwdriver, here we go. So get, get that back on there. Um, the best practice for attaching these back down is uh, don't screw them all the way in and do like a cross pattern. So you saw I did this one and then that one because you want even pressure across um, the CPU. You don't want to screw one side all the way down um, and then go to the next one. You want to sort of do this this cross pattern so you get an even even um, pressure on the CPU down there. Um, if there's uneven pressure on the CPU you can get some weird behavior um, again uh, memory issues um, and just weird, weird behavior in general CPU issues. Um, so you don't need to put too much force in these they have stoppers on them so 
um, you'll know when you get when when they're screwed down enough. There's the CPU. Oh, more dust on there. There's the CPU header down there. Just sort of tuck that under there. Good. Now it is time to. Now I'm going to install some RAM. So I've got some RAM kits here. Uh, these are brand new ones, so I'll take them out of the packet here. They're sort of Chinese brand, but I've used them before. I got 10 sticks of these, so pretty confident with these ones. Um, so I'll install those on there. Um, so the rule of thumb is you do the furthest away RAM slot first. And then for the second one, you skip one, skip one slot and put it in the next one over. Um, that'll give you dual channel in most cases. Um, so there's those installed. So now I have a power supply here, um, 650 watt. Uh, 80 plus white, just a, I think it's a Cooler Master, yeah, Cooler Master. So I'll chuck that on here on the desk, test bench here. Make sure I have all the cables I need here. Um, where's the 24 pin? Here's the 24 pin one. Make sure that one's plugged in nice and tight. And then the CPU, CPU one, where are you? Here it is. CPU one just CPU power. Sometimes they're four, sometimes they're eight. Uh, this one's eight, so just chuck that one on there as well. Um, another little piece of equipment that I use is this. It's a just a, a switch, wire switch, so I don't have to um, so I don't have to jump the jump the pins. Uh, I know where the pins are normally. Uh, yep, so it's just here. And that's it, it's ready to go into the, ready to connect to a monitor now. Uh, before, I'll mention this is a, a Ryzen 3200G. So this has onboard graphics that I can use the HDMI. If you have a non-G version of the Ryzen, um, what I normally do is I just uh, plug in a um, sort of a donor video card. So. Just a temporary you know, video card. This is a GT710, which is sort of perfect for, for test benching stuff. It's small, it's light, and I know it works. It's got HDMI. Just use that for, for test benching, and I know I know it's going to work without having to hook up the power and all that sort of stuff. All right, I'll take you to the next shot and see how it goes. All right, guys, so here it is on the test bench. Uh, this is why we test bench stuff. These sticks of RAM just would not boot uh, with this system. So I don't know if it's the frequency or, I've used these on Intel machines before, never on Ryzen. So I know Ryzen can be a little bit uh, more picky about what RAM it uses, but got a couple of eight sticks in there and it's uh, booting up now. So that's sort of checking the temperature of the CPU. I thought maybe it was the power supply that wasn't letting it boot up because the um, warning message was down there saying CPU, but um, I reseated the CPU, put a video card in, and ended up being a RAM. So this is why we test bench stuff. Um, the next thing I do is I have on this little thumb drive here, 
and stick that in and uh, give it a reboot. This um, that little stick of that little USB stick has MemTest 86 on it, so normally I'll run a um, run a memory di diagnostic as well. Um, let's see, is it gonna? Yeah. So this is um, MemTest 86, I think it's called. Um, so I'll let this uh, do its testing. Um, I'll show you how I usually run this. So I'll normally go to the go to the config, check test selection, and then just do a single pass and start the test. And then while that's running, I'll go and uh, go and sort out the um, the storage. All right. All right, guys. So I'm back at my desk here. Um, so. I'm taking the NVMe drive and putting it into a little enclosure here and attaching it to my machine. I'm going to flash a copy of uh, Windows 11 to it to put onto the to the machine on the test bench. Um, if you don't have NVMe drive enclosure or you're using a um, 2.5 inch or even a mechanical, you can use one of these um, these docks here. My machine actually has one built into it, so I don't have to worry about that. But um, from there, I, if you want to know how to create a disk image, or I might make a video about that later. Um, but I use this software, it's called Macrium Reflect. It's a free one, you can create, um, create images from manually installed windows, or in my case, I'm flashing a disk with one that I created earlier. Um, so I created this one, it's called Windows 11 No Key. So I just install Windows 11 without a product key and install a couple of things on there like specy some benchmarkers no drivers or anything like that because obviously if you're building a machine with an nvidia card or an amd card it's uh you, you need different drivers for different things so you want it as baseline as you can um so this one's getting restored to this disk yes that's the one you'll probably ask me to if i want to wipe it yes It'll take a little while. So that's basically now Windows is installed and ready to uh, put that disk into into that machine. Once this is finished, it usually doesn't take more than uh, more than five or ten minutes. But um, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, the next bit will be uh, putting the graphics card on, I guess. Uh, testing this drive, obviously. Uh, Storage, I, I don't usually test storage, I just chuck it in and, and away it goes. Um, in terms of, in terms of uh, operating systems, it's pretty straightforward. Alright, thanks. Alright, so you can see the RAM has passed the test. Um, so, I managed to get one of those sticks working with that one. This, this stick's bad. And you know what you do with bad, bad RAM? Bad, bad RAM. It goes straight into the trash. Because last thing you want to do is um, have to retest that again. Um, so this gets turned off now. And I can install the SSD. So we'll try and do this one handed. I'm not too sure how successful successful I'm gonna be. Oh, that whole thing came out. Nice. Yeah. Okay, anyway, I'll um I'll uh stop this and, and put it on and boot it up. All right, so by this point, the um, I've put the, the NVMe drive in, I've got the video card on there, and I've got it booted to Windows. So sometimes at this point, I'll um, put the drivers on, uh, but I think I'll just wait until I get it in the case to put the drivers on this time. 
Some of you might notice this is actually Windows 10. Um, that's because I used an NVMe drive that came with this system. So I flashed another one, put a different one in this one, but all good so far. Um, so I'll get this in the case and then other tests I do from here, um, uh, Cinebench and UnEngine, that sort of stuff, but I can do those after they've been put into the case so I can tell, um, the reason I do that is so that I can tell the temperatures inside the case rather than just on a test bench like this. All right, thanks guys. So in the interest of completion, I thought I'd do the rest of this. Um, at this point, I'd put the test the headphone jack at the front and the USB connection, um, the front headers. Um, on that USB is uh, a few software tools. One is Cinebench, so I'm about to run that now. Um, I'd go to File and Preferences to um, make sure it runs for 10 minutes. 10 minutes is a good amount of time to see if it's going to overheat or anything. Um, at the same time, I'll open Speccy as well, um, just to make sure I can monitor the temperature of the CPU there. So I'll leave that running for 10 minutes and just check on it from time to time, make sure um, CPU is handling it. Uh, and then I'll install the graphics drivers, um, try and get the most latest ones if I can. Um, yeah, so then I'll uh, put the license in, the Windows license and uh, let it do updates. Uh, UnEngine Heaven is already installed, so I'll give that a run for about an hour or so. Um, yeah, so it would be at this point that I'd uh, bring it all out here and I'd say, welcome to Local Tech Experts. I'm Jason for another build for you. So you can see that um, getting to this point is, there's a bit involved. It's basically building the PC before putting it in the case. Um, I didn't mention in there, in the room where I test this as well is um, is a voltage meter that I put on the power supply like so I can tell how much uh, power it's drawing and if it's getting anywhere near close to the breaking point of the power supply. Um, usually I'd run, I'd assemble this in there, take it back in, take it back in, run a couple more tests in bench and uh, UN engine for the for the GPU, uh, take screenshots and stuff like that. Um, but now this is ready to assemble. I won't, uh, won't make this video any longer. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you next time. See ya.